Hi, for this recording, I'm going to show you an idea in the proof of TLM2 based on David Lay's text, page 323, linear algebra and its application. The TLM2 on that page says that if V1, V2, V3 to VR are eigenvectors that correspond to distinct eigenvalues lambda 1, lambda 2 to lambda r of an n by n matrix A, then V1 to VR is a linearly independent set. Now, let me give you some idea of the proof. The idea is, let's start with a simple case. Start with two eigenvectors of distinct eigenvalue of A. That means, a v1 equal lambda 1 v1, a v2 equal lambda 2 v2, where lambda 1 and lambda 2 are different, where and v1 and v2 are non zero vector. Our aim is to show that v1 and v2 are linearly independent. How do we show this? Suppose there are two numbers, alpha and beta, not all zero, such that alpha v1 plus beta v2 is equal to zero. Let's suppose lambda 1 not equal to zero, and alpha not equal to zero. Then, multiply the equation by a, so a times alpha v1 plus beta v2 equal to a times zero. Alpha a times v1 plus beta a times v2 equal to zero. But then a times v1 is lambda 1 v1. a times v2 is lambda 2 v2. Alright, a v1 is lambda 1 v1. a v2 is lambda 2 v2. So, you get lambda 1 alpha v1 plus lambda 2 beta v2 equal to zero. This we call it equation 1. Now let's go back to this equation alpha v1 plus beta v2 equals 0. This time I'm going to multiply this equation by lambda 1. So lambda 1 times alpha v1 plus lambda 1 times beta v2 equals 0. So I have equation 2. Put this equation together. Now I take equation 1 minus equation 2. Now, when I do that, notice that these two terms cancel. Lambda 1, alpha, v1, they'll cancel each other. So, you left with lambda 2 minus lambda 1 times beta v2 equals 0. But we know that lambda 1 and lambda 2 are distinct, and v2 is non zero. So, that will force beta equals 0. Then, we go back to the equation alpha v1 plus beta v2 equals 0 as beta is equal to 0 now this is force alpha v1 equals 0 but then we know v1 is non zero so this is force alpha to be 0 therefore this will give you a contradiction in any case alpha not equal to 0 and v1 not equal to 0 this is actually a contradiction now so, V1 and V2 are linearly independent. So, the conclusion in this case is any two eigenvectors of distinct eigenvalues are linearly independent. Now, what if there are three eigenvectors of distinct values? So, the idea is this. Start with three eigenvectors of distinct eigenvalues of A. Let's say a v1 equal to lambda 1 v1, a v2 equal lambda 2 v2, a v3 equal lambda 3 v3, and lambda 1 less than lambda 2 less than lambda 3. And v1, v2, v3 are non zero vector. Our aim now is to show that this v1, v2, v3 are linearly independent. How do we start this? Suppose there are 
three number alpha, beta, gamma. Not all zero, such that alpha v1 plus beta v2 plus gamma v3 equals zero. Let's assume that lambda 1 not equal to 0, and alpha not equal to 0. Using the same process, multiply by A, and using the linearity, you know that it will give you alpha A V1 plus beta A V2 plus gamma A V3 equal to 0. And then, you make use of the fact that A V1 equal to lambda 1 V1, A V2 equal to lambda 2 V2, and a v3 equal lambda 3 v3 and so we have an equation 3 then we move on to using alpha v1 by beta v2 by gamma v3 equals 0 multiply both sides by lambda 1 we get lambda 1 alpha v1 plus lambda 1 beta v2 plus lambda 1 gamma v3 equal to 0 let's call it equation 4 now put the equation 3 and 4 together and then you take equation 3 minus equation 4 you find that these two terms alpha lambda 1 v1 cancel each other so we left with lambda 2 minus lambda 1 beta v2 plus lambda 3 minus lambda 1 gamma v3 equal to 0 now by using the earlier conclusion lambda 2 minus lambda 1 is non-zero lambda 3 minus lambda 1 is non-zero that force beta and gamma equal to zero so if beta and gamma equal to zero this is force alpha v1 equal to zero and so alpha equal to zero and this contradicts our assumption that alpha is non-zero therefore we conclude that now v1, v2, v3 are linearly independent now conclusion is I mean three eigenvectors of the same eigenvalues are linearly independent. Now, what if there are four eigenvectors of the same eigenvalues? I believe you know how to do this already, but then I write this argument. That finish the explanation of the idea behind the proof. That's the end of the recording.